Um, okay, so my name is um, Sue Rees. Um, I'm obviously not from Vermont, um, but I've actually realised I think I've lived here longer than you guys have been alive, so maybe a bit more Vermont than you are, actually. Um, and I got involved in doing this um, Vermont movie um, by a colleague of mine who worked with Nora Jacobson, and Nora Jacobson had edited the Vermont movie. Everybody knows about the Vermont movie, right? To some degree. Yeah. Yeah. No? I think you should tell a little bit about it. I think most of the students have seen the clip that says that a movie was made about Vermont, but student voice or youth voices were left out. But if you want to refresh... Okay, yeah, so the Vermont movie, I think, started in about 2004, 2005. Um, and it was by Nora Jacobson with a couple of other filmmakers who lived in Vermont, filmed in Vermont, but actually wanted to do a documentary about Vermont, but also wanted to do something where it was just not one person's voice. So they got, over the next sort of about four or five years, they got a number of filmmakers um, involved in doing se sessions, sections, sessions, or sections, or subject matters about the one. Um, and that's ranged from, actually, which was, wasn't, it didn't end up, I don't think it was the last Vermont movie, but it was on the AA has started in Vermont, it started on the, the um, state quarries in Vermont, the marble quarries in Vermont, which I did, on the farming, agricultural, on immigration into Vermont and out of Vermont and all the rest of it. Um, and the bit which I did with um, a colleague of mine called Dina Janis um, was um, we, we were asked to do something, or I sort of we decided we wanted to do something. Um, and I, along with doing sort of film and animation, I also do set design. Um, and I'm sort of a person who likes making things and working out how things work. And so I wanted to do something which followed something from one form into another. So we ended up doing a documentary on marble, going from actually how it's sort of constructed in the ground geologically. And there was a colleague of mine who's a geologist who... Um, talks in the movie, through to, there's some beautiful quarries up just north of Manchester, Dorset quarries, and where you can actually go into the ground, through to people who actually use marble, sort of cut it in for kitchens or for building, through to architecture. Um, and, and so then, which is what you guys expect will do, you, one ends up with way too much footage. And then you spend actually about a year and a half trying to edit it all down and try and make some sense of it. Obviously, you do not have that time because you've got about three months to do this, so it's a little quicker, shorter time scale. Um, and it ended up being like I ended up doing like an 18 minute short piece, with, and with all of that footage was then handed over along with all the other footage, which is sort of inverted commas a B roll, but it was sort of also the A roll, which you talk about A and B, yeah, whatever. I don't think that the Vermont students know anything about A and B. Okay, so basically you usually take lots more footage than you think, and you also take some footage which is sort of going to be, may or may not be used, but it's sort of peripheral to what you're looking at. Um, and, and some of that as often ends up in the, in the final thing, but it's sort of backup in case you want to get transition from A to B, somebody talking. Um, but anyway, I ended up with a lot of footage. Um, and all of that footage then went to Nora, who then edited in the marble bit into, I think it was section B, which is sort of dealing with the land. So it has sort of footage about um, slate quarries and marble and agriculture. So it was sort of land section, which was section B. Um, so, yes, so that was it. Uh, also, in that, in this whole performance, which is... Um, so if Sherry's here, she can plug you in, hopefully it'll work, and she can come and shoot it. No. Oh, okay. Um, it should be, if you don't need to play this, I don't. No, I think I'm still... It's okay, I can play, I can play with the laptop, it's okay. okay. It'll be okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, the other thing which was interesting in the... Um, in the doing it, I... 
we did a lot of research up in um, Proctor, where it was Proctor ended up being governor of Vermont, and he sort of set up basically a town called Proctor with huge marble quarries. And we met up with a, um, there was a his town historian and also the, um, it's a museum of Proctor historian. And that sort of led me to looking into a bit where marble, Vermont marble has ended up. But it turns out it ended up in the Supreme Court building in Washington, D.C., Arlington National Monument, the monument used for the Challenger disaster, which was the, you know, the spaceship which fell out of the sky which blew up. That was used from Vermont marble. Um, and also um, the Arlington National, no, obviously the Supreme Court, part of the Senate building, and some other buildings. So I ended up going down to Washington, D.C. and filming in the Senate building and down there. So you sort of start off with a little idea and then suddenly it sort of gets bigger and grows out. Um, and the other thing um, which was, um, was interesting was that there was quite a lot of marble obviously used in um, buildings around here and the uh, Robert Frost grave up in the, the old Bennington church. Um, was a, you know from one that was a marble from Vermont, so you sort of end up sort of following trails around. Um, so has everybody seen this? <coughs> no, some people have, some people don't. Let me just show you this. It's not very, it's not very long, um, and then I want to show you. Um, I'm going to then show you a little bit of the bit which I did, um, and then I'm going to show you something called Dark Side of the Lens, which is by um, a Cornish. <coughs> Cornwall in England, a Cornish surfer who sort of followed him. Well, I'll tell you about that in a moment. Let me just let me just play this for the time being. A group of Vermont filmmakers got together to make a six-part movie about their state. And action. The Vermont movie is about highways and land use. It's about eugenics. It's about people who live off the grid, who generate their own power, generate their own food. It's about geology and geography. Also, the story of Romaine Tenney from Muscutney. It's about revolution and workers. It's about the political struggles in Vermont. It's about hippies. Race. What else is it about? For my Yankee nuclear power plant. Participating in local government and town meetings. Yeah, it's about the evolution of communities in Vermont. What is Vermont? After they finished, they realized that some very important voices were missing. Your voices. I'm going to stay up there. Slaughter animals. I'm not going to. His legs are building. This is the stock to be cut. So now these Vermont filmmakers are getting together to sponsor a contest to hear your voice. What are your thoughts about this state? What is missing? What intrigues you? What are you passionate about? What are you proud of? That's right. My, I ain't no Martin Luther King Jr. has said. It's your turn. And to get involved, contact your public access television station. Talk to a teacher in your high school. Speak with your film or history professor. Just don't miss this opportunity. I ask one thing of you. Please stand up with me. Stand up. Stand up for equality. Stand up for the fearful. Stand up for our future. Stand up for our families. Stand up for love. Stand up, Vermont. Stand up. Folks, folks. Folks. Pick up a camera. Make a short film about Vermont from your point of view, and send it to us by April 10th, 2015.
So, for, as they said, it can be anything from 2 to 15 minutes long. So that a big range can be experimental, can be animation, can be documentary, you know, or fictional, or any of the above. But about you, basically, and what you're interested in. But I'll get back to that in a moment. Um, so the thing which... Um, This is just, I'll just show the start of this, and I can give, I can give these links to people, links to people. Um, so I don't want to play the whole thing. But this was actually filmed, this was one of those bits of filming um, when I was driving down from Proctor, and there was this sort of the clouds coming over the mountains, if you know, they're just north of Manchester. Um, so I ended up sort of stop in the car and filming it and then actually ended up using it. But you sometimes take stuff which you don't, just don't know that you're going to use. Dog has um, a great sense of dignity and a sense of time. It's popular. So there was, I just sort of, um, I didn't do much animation in this piece, but I did quite a bit of, a little bit of animation just because of transitions or getting from one place <coughs> to another. I think the sound on this is pretty bad, actually, so... Um, well, I, I can talk over it. It's okay. It's okay. Um, so this was filmed up in... If you're going up... Does everybody know where there's big quarries are north of Manchester? So Dorset quarries. So if you go up the mountain, it was a really cold day, there was all these huge slabs of marble. Um... And this is actually the, this was actually in the winter the Dorset Quarry going towards Dorset where people swim, um, but which was what I found. Um, I'll just sort of scroll through this a little bit because you can look at it online. But um, and these are some of the things. But uh, and then there's a geologist talking. But um, this was we got permission to go into the quarries. Um, so it ended up that the footage um, was pretty beautiful. I mean, nothing to do with me, to do with the actual location. Um, but the sound in there was atrocious because, of, because of A, was an echo, and B, there was tons of mechanical noises going on. So I had to do an awful lot of um, cleaning up the sound afterwards. So, you know, you get sort of nice footage, you get some really interesting... Um, uh, dialogue going on with the workers, but then actually what happens is you have to kind of <coughs> spend more time dealing with the dialogue and the sound than actually with, with other things. Um, so there was a quite a lot filmed. So this was a big truck inside the quarry, um, in the quarry. Um, and then we, I've got, then we interviewed the workers there, and then these were some of the footage of the places down in... Um, and this was in the Senate building. The other thing which you can do, and um, maybe I won't say, shouldn't say this out loud, but sometimes it's worthwhile filming and then asking questions. Because I walked into the Senate building from the wrong end of the building with my camera, sort of basically filmed for a while, walked into the big sort of concourse where they always do films on... Um, we always see it on the television, people being interviewed, and then they all told me not to, to film. But luckily, at that point, I got the film because I'd already filmed in the earlier part of the building. So sometimes doing things we shouldn't do sometimes works actually to your advantage. Um, so then I had a, quite a bit of sort of um, um, way to get through a lot of information, used a lot of photographs, um, and from the museum. Um, and then this was a little bit um, with the people who were milling the, um, the marble, so taking it from the big slabs into um, things which people use for flooring or for kitchens. Try to stay off the surface while doing the edges because you don't want to scratch the surfaces, and it takes a while to get that down. And he had me polishing around the grit machine. And every step, you have to make sure you bottom every step out. So you got to get used to it. It's amazing how it, you know, where it starts. It's in the ground. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Oh. Oh, feel, oh, and this was the, sort of, the cast of characters we ended up filming. We were breaking. 
Um, so this you can look at online. Um, I want to show you. Um, so this was a sort of... Um, all, so this footage ended up being cut up again with the final edit for the sort of the longer movie, but that was just my section. But I want to show you this piece, which um, I think it's about six minutes long, so we should have enough time, um, which was done by um, Mickey, Mickey Smith, I think he was, um, who was, grew up in Cornwall, which is a sort of, not isolated, because England's much smaller than America, but a rural part of England. Um, and he, from the sort of the age of like 11 onwards, was a surfer. So in Cornwall, if you, it's a surf's up, you go surfing. Here, it's sort of like if you snow or whatever, you go snowboarding or doing whatever. But anyway, so he basically put cameras on the back in front of his bicycle, you know, on his surfboard, whatever, and ended up um, working in Australia for the big surfing companies and doing surf competitions. Um, he ended up, um, after sort of doing commercial work for, I think it's Billabong and Riptide, he ended up back in, he went to live in Ireland. And this is a little, it's much more of an experimental, sort of poetic documentary about himself and about filming sur surf. And I got it from... Um, Michael Saka, who was um, who was sort of doing the sort of similar to me, and he 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 pointed it out, and it's a really nice, um, very sort of poetic documentary, um, which is sort of like um, the gentleman earlier who working for Cat TV who does skydive, and this is doing the opposite, but going into the water. Um. Life on the road is something I was raised to embrace. My ma always encouraged us to open our eyes and hearts to the world, make up our own minds through experience and be inspired. I see life in angles, in lines of perspective, a slight turn of the head, the blink of an eye, subtle glimpses of magic other folk might pass by. Cameras help me translate, interpret and understand what I see. It's a simple act that keeps me grinning. I never set out to become anything in particular, only to live creatively and push the scope of my experience through adventure and through passion. That's still all that means something to me, same as most anyone with dreams. My heart bleeds Celtic blood and I'm magnetised to familiar frontiers. Raw, brutal, cold coastlines for the right wave riders to challenge. This is where my heart beats hardest. I try to pay tribute to that magic through photographs. Whether in the endless storms for rare glimpses of magic each winter is both a blessing and a curse I relish. I want to see wave riding documented the way I see it in my head and the way I feel it in the sea. It's a strange set of skills to begin to acquire and it's only achievable through time spent riding waves. All sorts of waves on all sorts of crafts. 
and use more time learning out in the water. Floating in the sea amongst lumps of swell, we'll always learn something. She's been a lifelong wise old classroom teacher of sorts, and hopefully always will be. Buried beneath headlands, shaping the coast, mind-blowing images of empty waves burn away at me. Solid ocean swells powering through deep, cold water. Heavy waves, waves with weight. They coax from comfortable routine, ignite the imagination, convey some divine spark, whisper possibilities, conjure the situations I thrive amongst and love to document. We all take knocks in the process. Broken backs, drownings, near drownings, hypothermia, dislocations, fractures, frostbite, head wounds, stitches, concussions, broke my arm and that's just the last couple of years. Still look forward to getting amongst it each winter though. Cold creeping into your core, driving you mad, day after day. Mumbling to yourself while you hold position and wait for the next set to come. The dark side of the lens. An art form unto itself and us. Silent workhorses of the surfing world. There's no sugary cliche. Most folk don't even know who we are, what we do or how we do it, let alone want to pay us for it. I never want to take this for granted, so I try and keep motivation simple, real and positive. If I only scrape a living, at least it's a living worth scraping. If there's no future in it, at least it's present worth remembering. Fires of happiness and waves of gratitude for everything that brought us to that point on earth at that moment in time. To do something worth remembering with a photograph or a scar. I feel genuinely lucky to hand on heart say I love doing what I do. And though I may never be a rich man, if I live long enough, I certainly have a tale or two for the nephews. And I dig the thought of that. So obviously, really nice high-end cameras underwater, which, which more than likely you guys don't have, and I certainly don't have. Um, but there's a, um, there's, a, there's a little bit about him, and again, I'll send the links to these, um, about, about him and how he um, <clears throat> started on, on doing his work. Um, the other thing which on this link is, was um, getting back to the project I was doing, um, thank God for the web, because you can find lots of information on it. So you, look, you, know, you look up Vermont Marble and you end up with all these places where Vermont Marble was used. So you know, don't obviously forget that <coughs> the web is there and it's very useful <coughs> for finding things. So, so um, does, does anybody have any questions? Any questions? Oh, good. Um, so, uh, a lot of, you know, for us being in, in Vermont is being able to be outside, not, not yeah. only in the winter, but also in the summer. So, like, how, are there suggestions about how to capture our other seasons? Because that's <laughs> part of, like, you know, that's a huge part of living here. No, 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 totally. I mean, I think um, this is where anybody who French family anybody you know who's got photographs of the other periods yeah. of the year because what I ended up doing was a bit of a collage I mean I didn't show it all the way through because I was just worrying about time and maybe I'll show this at the end maybe um, it's um, so you can always use photographs there's going to be somebody's got some photographs of the right. summer you know, I like. I always go to Lake Perrin, and there's always those great photographs. Of, you know, does anybody go to Lake Perrin? Nobody goes to Lake Perrin. Some people go to Lake Perrin. Yeah, Lake Perrin. So there's always those great photographs out on the outside of people on the dock and stuff. And I always think, oh damn, I wish I'd take some photographs, but I always forget to. Right. But I bet somebody has some photographs of somebody doing something or other, hopefully in the summer, you know, or the spring if it ever shows up. And, the fall. <laughs> it will. Yeah, we're just gonna have snow. Yeah, we got snow for the next two. This thing yeah, is done. Yeah, basically the duration of 
go of the thing. Yeah, I mean, I think what I was thinking <coughs> is that what usually, if I'm starting on a project, I need to be really interested in it. I mean, obviously, I do a lot of stuff which I have to get myself interested in to find a way to get into something, um, because otherwise you lose enthusiasm um, and you don't follow through and you don't do as good a job as you possibly could. So, I mean, because I think the period is that you've now got like a month and a half to ponder, think, and, and come up with some bright ideas, right? And then we'll come back and hear the ideas and hopefully have looked at at least some starters of footage or some collecting of some ideas. And then, in, so basically in three months' time, so where are we now? It's sort of, it's the in February. So sort of late February, early March, you will be sort of on the final editing and sorting things out, right? So the other thing to do is to, I mean, I, I always um, carry around endless sketchbooks, Comsa, um, which uh, I drag around with me because um, if you're thinking of ideas, you sort of, they don't always come immediately. And so if you write down ideas and then you sort of are wandering around and you're catching a bus somewhere or you're doing something else, <coughs> some, another idea comes up which you actually think is better than the first idea and then by the time you've got five ideas, you actually go back to the first idea and think, actually, that was much better than any of the other ideas which you've come up with. So, in other words, have a think about what ideas you want to do and sort of play them out a bit and then hopefully one of them will sort itself out and you will actually want to go with it. The other thing is, so one thing is that, that you've got, you're interested in it. You sort of have an idea, you can sort of I, have some ideas about where it's going to go and then allow it to take you to places which you didn't really realize. And the thing which I forgot to mention with the Vermont marble thing, there was these big strikes up there in the 30s and it turned out that a lot of the, the people who went up to support the strikers went up from Bennington. Which, so then there was a solid connection between Bennington and Proctor, and, and I found some good quotes about strikers from, the, from some articles written in the 1930s. In, I think it was a, the equivalent of the nation at that point. And so there was a sort of sudden that you, you're sort of following a trail which gets you some more information which makes it <laughs> sort of hopefully richer, deeper, as they say. Um, and so, I mean, I, these would, I just blasted these out quickly, also sort of at the top of my head. But it's like when you were saying that part of being in Vermont is being outside. So then you sort of, it's, it, there's, um, there's great bike trails, there's a lot of snowboarding, there's a lot of cross country skiing, there, are, there is deer hunting, there is gardens, there's fishing, there's lake power, and there's whatever. So there's lots of things outside. So if people are interested in the outside, that you you're interested in it for certain reasons, and maybe that is something which is something to start thinking about for an idea. Um, and also, like I was saying earlier, is get more footage than you think you will need, because um, you never know how the final edit's going to be. And I definitely, which is where they've taken using the photographs. You can obviously use some photographs, or you could use some animation to tell part of the story which you don't actually have video footage for and obviously you could also do it straight f through on a um, on an animation um, what else oh the other thing is which um, uh, when you're interviewing people um, don't interrupt them because then you've got to edit out the interruptions which is what I found to my cost it wasn't necessarily me, but anyway. So, so if you if you were doing an interview with somebody, just make sure you get quite a bit of um, dialogue going with the person, but try not to speak over when they're talking. You guys have done some Final Cut Pro editing and Premiere, something editing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Nodding. Not okay. Good. <laughs> Good, good, good. Uh, I have a question. For yeah. Me. Uh, so, do you give do you give your interview subjects questions in advance, or do you just spring it on? Um, I usually have got some questions I sort of want to cover because I I have in my head I have some video footage and I want to have some dialogue to go over it. 
And then actually what happens is that they then go off on a tangent, which is much more interesting than any of the questions I came up with. And then you have to follow along, then you sort of try and follow along with that a bit. You know, because often, you know, you sort of think you sort of, you know, you sort of have these ideas of an answer, and sometimes the answers, yeah, are going in another direction. But I think it's really good to, to have some questions. And the other thing is just to get them to introduce themselves, because you always forget that. Um, so, you know, get them to introduce themselves first so you've got that, you know, that name on tape, that person on tape, and a little bit about their background. Um, I was just going to show you just a little bit of this. What is that? Oh, shit. Um, no, I don't want to see it. This is a little animation by um, a French animator um, going to Madagascar, the island of Madagascar. Um, and this is where he used a lot of drawings. It's called um, Postcard, Madagascar Postcard. Um, so he's got actual... Um, drawings of cars, you know, little little pretty car things, I mean toy cars, um, and does a lot of, this is, a, a, there's a program called After Effects, um, which I think he did a lot of this in, but this is a nice sort of finding, um, describing a journey to a place by animation. So, I mean, th that's something which, you know, this is obviously a fairly great accomplished animator. But don't forget, you can use, you know, going back, I'm sorry, I'm using, using the, the garden summer thing. You know, there's lots of cutouts. You can cut out of flowers from flower catalogs, which always look beautiful, and they never work in reality or whatever. Um, you know, which shows what the summer's like. So don't forget, you can use a mixture of things to get somewhere, which if you don't have the footage. This animation is it's a whole mixture of different a whole mixture of different styles um, of sort of like watercolor um, drawings. Um, there was a sewing piece. Um, there's some photographs at some point, and it's not saying one type of style is the way to go. So don't forget that with your pieces. It may end up being a whole mixture of, um, of different styles, and that's okay. And I'll give you the link to this one too. the end of this? Yes. Yeah, okay. Can we, yeah, so be talking. Or you listening.
But also don't forget, I mean, you, there's, apropos of um, combining medium, um, cell phones can take really good, um, can take really surprisingly good video. You know, you can, you can put together a whole lot of photographs, you can have, you know, better quality footage, and it's a question of actually sorting out basically the format and how it will work together. So it could be a whole mixture of things. So it doesn't need to be just video or just um, photographs or just animation or it could be a combination of things. So you know, don't get stuck with really needing X, Y, or Z because you can with a bit of imagination solve the problem hopefully. Um, you know, and also thinking, you know, things around here, there's obviously the sort of the prospect mounting, the cross-country skiing stuff. Um, 
there's also what, you know, the whole thing with the New York Times and um, the drugs in, in Bennington, you know, that's something which could be documented or looked into the guys who did the little rap thing. Um, there's the, there's a whole thing here with the wrestling team's big here, right? The wrestling team big here? Yes. You know, like the sports thing, so you could do like the sport, sport end of things or follow them around. Um, there's also, my dad, he usually does a fairly big theatre productions. Um, you know, if somebody's more looking into like theatre productions or theatre productions in schools in Vermont. Um, there's also like your grandmother or your, you know, your mother or your father, you know, that's sort of really personal. Um, there's lots of quirky bakeries in town. You know, there's the Russian ones, the fish and chip place, and there's a Dutch one. I mean, if you're interested in sort of more cooking end of things. Um, what else? Um, and the other thing is, which it depends on what people, how people work, but I try and do a storyboard, and the storyboard basically is a sort of a series of like little images, which you can do it in any way you like, sort of getting me from the beginning to the end, and then that at least gives me a little bit of a structure. Um, but people work in different ways, so you might want to, at some point when you're working out your ideas, you might start to think about how you're going to have that sort of structure of the story and whether it's going to be much more of a poetic piece like the, um, the surfer piece, or this is, which has got a fairly clear beginning and middle and an end. Um, the thing I did was a bit more of a ramble. I mean, it sort of was following a trail, basically. Um, okay. I have a question. Yeah. So there was music in this this last film. What are the like parameters Copyright. for using like music and like other people's work? It's it's like this hundred dollar question. So the I will send you a link, which has all about copyright for mm -hmm. music. If you guys have got friends who are in a band or have can play music or have composed some things, that would be great, because you know you can get the rights for it. That's 100% you know, sure. Mm -hmm. If it's a student production, um, and this applies to you know, undergrads and stuff like that, and it's not for, you're not going to make monetary gain out of it, it's sort of, you're okay, you're fine. If it's after, I think it's 50 years on some things, and Disney just shifted it, because they want more copyright, it, there's a certain period, I can't remember, I think it's like 25 or 50 years, backwards, you're fine. Mm -hmm. you know, but then if there's been a new interpretation of a piece of music, then suddenly they have the copyrights of it. Um, but, but, and this is on tape, but <laughs> when push comes to show, are you? Um, whenever you're done, I was gonna mention a website that's a pretty good deal. Yes, there's a good one, yes, because I'll send you, and then you can do, yeah. Um, but, is somebody actually going to find somebody other who's done something other on somewhere other and chase one down? One doesn't know. Right. You know, I mean, I've had troubles with the, like, the little animation I've been sending out where I didn't have the copyrights. It was a Romanian gypsy thing. Couldn't get hold of the, the company, which has now gone bust. And we ended up having to record something which I had copyrights for yeah. just to cover my bases. But, you know, with student, product, student projects, it's pretty okay because it's not like you're going to make millions of dollars out of anything. Well, I'm not going to make millions so of dollars out of anything. Yeah, but if you can find original pieces, it'd be, it's totally, you know, you know then you're totally safe, but quite honestly, you're sort of all right. Right. Okay. Um, but uh, as you said, you've got a copyright. Yeah, there's actually um, there's a website called Audio Blocks. There's video blocks too, but Audio Blocks, it's, they usually have promotions for like, 60 to 100 bucks a year, you can get thousands and thousands of songs, sound effects, and everything. And it's it's not like you know your favorite band's song. It's uh, really well <coughs> instrumental pieces, really any any genre, and any type. So, I mean, I, I know like at Cat TV, for example, we we have video blocks and audio blocks, and you just sign up, pay the 80 bucks, it's safe, and then for an entire year, you get unlimited downloads and free use of whatever you download permanently. Um, yeah. it, it's definitely, I mean, you could probably, I don't know what the rules are, but you could probably share it, you know, one person could pay or the class could pay or something, and for an entire year, the, the class might have 
permission to use it or something. I, you might have to read the fine print to make sure that's legal. But I always tell my students that if they use somebody else's work and it goes viral, whoever's work you use owns it. You yeah. don't own that copyright, right. and they have a lock. They own it, and they get any money, any monetary reward. They basically have the right to. Yeah. So you know, if you never know, it's going to go viral. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so it's just a good idea to use your own, or make sure you have permission. Some bands are great about giving permission. Yeah. Looking up royalty and frame music usually works pretty well. Yeah, and there's like Moby, whatever his name is, who sort of will happily yeah. score something for you. And the M U B I Moby, something like that. Yeah. But definitely, and also <coughs> like sound effects, like oh, sorry, you were coughing. I mean, so the, the, no, no, I was meaning that's a good sound effect or somebody coughing. So some, suddenly you might need sound effects. You know, you can take, do you have little field record, little recorders, like audio recorders? Mm -hmm. Well, like a lot of phones have audio, yeah. you can record on. So, you know, if you take it around with you, you can often get really good sound effects just wandering around, you know, and depending, obviously, what you're doing your piece on, you know. Does anybody have any bright ideas? Yes? Anybody, anything thought of? Uh, I was going to do like probably a kind of documentary about Ameri or, uh, Bennington's entertainment scene, like music and theater. And That'd be great. Like, you know, we always hear about Bennington drugs, bad things, mm -hmm. bad things, bad things, when all this art and all this inspiration is happening. Yeah, nice. Because of, I feel like it's because of the area. Like, yeah. we're really art friendly and environment. So. That'd be great. Nice. Yeah. So if you're doing that, I mean, also the other thing is don't forget you guys can work together on things. Well, I'm assuming. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, working together on things really helps because more than one person's brain sometimes helps on solving problems. Um, and also you sometimes you leave people on. I mean, not leave, leave people on, but you get people going in a different direction than you would necessarily do on your own. So, I mean, I'm not, I'm not point, pointing at you, but just, just in general, if you do want to do that. Um, if you're doing that, just start collecting stuff now. Yeah. You know, because you can't, I think the problem is because it's such a short time scale, you know, you're like, oh, damn, I wish I could have got the band in the summer. Mm -hmm. And you can't. So, you know, get, if anything's going on now, get it now, even if you don't use it later on, at least you got it. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, anybody else? And also don't forget, like, the guy, the surfer guy, and I've done some stuff where I basically start, I mean, this, this is not going to help with the, with the art scene or the band, but if you're doing things outside, you know, attaching a camera to, well, not, depends on if it's yours, whatever, to, like, a front of a bicycle and travelling around or outside of a car, you can get a lot of, you know, moving footage by doing that type of thing. Um, and a lot of the small cameras... You know, on the, well now with the cell phone, you can, you know, just basically strap it on to the front if you're doing travelling type things, you know. And you can always, you know, good, you can always change things a bit around in, in photocommas in post where you can, you can make things look better than they were actually shot with, with a bit of tweaking. Thank so God for all the stuff. Say, so if anybody has any equipment needs, come and see me in room 107. The school has a ton of equipment, and unfortunately, it's not as readily known to students. Yeah. But I can. We have flip phones, we have digital recorders, we have all kinds of equipment that we can nice. supply you with. Yeah. We, you own it. Yeah, and we just got like um, in my office. We have like backdrops. So for like, you know, just for example, these pictures that are up here, just to take like a, um, you know, like a profile picture. We also have green screen. <coughs> So if anybody wants to use that, you can come into my office and use that. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. So I didn't, I don't think I used any green screen on my thing. Does anybody know who green screen is? You know, we can, you know, and that's really useful to have the other backgrounds going on behind if you, you know, if you need to, which is sort of great. Yeah. I know it's a little off subject. So could you tell us where you work and, and how, you know, like a little bit about, because uh, they don't know. I don't think oh, me? Yeah, just a little bit about okay. where you work and how you got involved in that kind of thing. How does okay. here? Yeah, um, I, um, I'm not sure how I ended up here. I was obviously from England. Um, I'd gone to school in undergrad in England 
was married, got divorced and decided to leave England, decided I just needed a change. Um, went to a grad school over in Syracuse and with a total delusional um, ideal distance and absolute lack of knowledge of the large of America thought that somehow Syracuse was vaguely close to New York and it was you know, vaguely close spot, I don't know what I was thinking. <coughs> you know, and then six hours later on, I think it was people with express airplanes at that point, I sort of like, oh my God, I'm going to Syracuse. And the first people I met were the basketball team who were like way up there. And I was thinking this country is huge. So after that, um, I was there for a while, and then there was a tech job opened up at Bennington College, which is where that is up the, up the road. Um, so I came here for a tech job, thinking I wasn't sure if I wanted to go back to England at that point. So did that for a semester, and then, which then became a year and a half. And then a faculty position opened up. And I started off actually doing always very tech orientated, but a lot of sort of motor orientated, moving installation stuff, and was sort of teaching sculpture and sort of tech stuff and drawing, and then that sort of morphed into sort of animation and video, and I've always been doing video over the period, but so I sort of do a mixture, so now I do, I sort of teach animation and everything from like stop motion shoot to CGI, which is sort of computer-generated animation, which is sort of like the Shrek type stuff, um, and sort of After Effects, which is sort of like a 2D program, which is really wonderful. If anyone wants to do animation, After Effects is great. Um, and then um, and then I do sort of work with theatre companies. So I do like quite a bit of projection work with theatre, and also work with dance companies. So I do sort of set, set projection type stuff and animation. So I'm, I'm Pretty spread over, spread across. I like challenges. Challenges are good.